Okay, well, it's B.B. Scone here again in the wonderful cottage at the back of the Tin Shed in Larne with Americana Gold. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Yeah. Nice to be here. Uh, why has only one of you got lipstick on? That's what I want to know. <laughs> I've given it up. I, I was told I was talking to a glam rock band this afternoon. <laughs> It's a little early in the day for me yet. Okay. <laughs> I wait until the evening before I wear the uh, nice little sort of Chanel off the shoulder numbers and 20 denier hose. It's very liberating. <laughs> and the spandex, what about your spandex? Well. Where's that? In my case, I could put, put it on for the show. Okay. <laughs> okay, for the, our two viewers, Sid and Doris Bonkers of Eglisura, would you like to tell people who you are, what you do in the band? Then? Americana Gold. Gold. That's right. Um, we started off a couple of years ago as a band called the Californians, which is an eleven-piece band. Wow! And we were we faithfully represented the uh, the works of like um, the um, American, you know, sort of West Coast sound, which was like James Taylor. Um, Mamas and, I heard you doing a Mamas and Papas yeah, number that's, that's during the right. uh, yeah. Sanchez. Yeah. Yeah. It's the West Coast era in the seventies where all the songwriting was coming together. And they all used to stay in Laurel Canyon together and they'd all write and they'd all go around the, everybody else's houses. So you'd have Crosby, Stills and Nash turning up at Linda yeah. Ronstadt's place or, you know, James Taylor popping in to have a, have a, have a chat with Carly Simon or well, more than a chat with Carly Simon because he married her. Wow. But, um, you know, you know it, it would just be all that kind, that kind of sound, the Americana yeah. sound. So you copied that, or, well, or you emulated that, yeah, I mean, yes, with the Ameri- Californians' eleven-piece band. Yeah, was mean, the sex and drugs involved that it, as well? More like oh. tea, milk, <laughs> yeah, text, and, and text and, and trudge, <laughs> and sausage rolls. Because <laughs> Phyllis Ann. That was a big part of that and scene. Phyllis Ann. Yeah, she was in it, Phyllis. <laughs> I'm still getting strepsil flashbacks myself <laughs> from those days. You know. <laughs> so anyway, what you and Lorraine, what are you doing the, the present band? Then? Well, uh, well, I'm. Um, I do the sort of some songs as Joni Mitchell. Joni Mitchell songs and Carly Simon and um, Linda Ronstadt songs, um, but we also do our own songs as well. We do songwriting, I mean, yeah. you know, in the Americana style. We'll come on to that in a minute. I don't want to stop you in full flow, no, but let's perfect. let's find out what the other guys, who are the other guys, and what they do in the band. So, you're uh, the one and only Peter King. Peter, right. Peter King is Terry, Terry Thomas, and you both play guitars. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. okay. So, how come the Californians got slimmed down? Where's the other eight gone? You know. You're not one over the eight anymore. No. We blame it on the recession, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. 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 That's just, uh, you can't get the, the venues really open yeah. to cope with the, the large bands. Mm-hmm. And another thing is that the, a lot of the musicians are so busy they just can't get together yeah. often enough. Yeah, yeah. so uh, you were all in the Californians. Yes. Did you yeah. m- yes. meet up? As part of that, or did you know each other before the California? Well, no, we've all known each other for many, many yes, years. Right. Um, and it was just that. We didn't feel that we could call this little threesome um, uh, Californians. We felt it was better to sort of have a different name, but within the same, you know, Americana Gold is what we came up with. Just, yeah. But it's the same songs, because we just felt that we would be taken away from the 11-piece band um, if, we, if we called it ourselves, and that wasn't fair, really. Right. So we decided to just, you know be a, um, a three-piece so that we could just go up and do more venues okay. it's so expensive to do you know yeah it must be hard yeah. traveling with a big band and yeah. uh, money's yeah. not that much in, no, in it's much more practical gigs like as well. yeah. yeah and it allowed us to put an entirely all acoustic kind of spin on um on the music which was very acoustically oriented yeah and in some respects actually expand um on <clears throat> the, the range of songs that we were doing so yeah. you know what well, we could take away with not having the eleven-piece band, we could make up for in other ways. Do you all sing then? And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So that that's important if you're looking at people like Crosby, Stills and Nash and Indeed. all those. You need you need the voices. Really. Is this a lasting treasure, or just a moment?
In the same vein. Yeah. Terry and I are in a band called Trenchfoot. Yes. Fine, fine, oh, fine bunch of human beings. What? Splendid uh, bunch of uh, people. <laughs> well, I've interviewed Trenchfoot for the uh, Radio Pembrokeshire show I've had, but yes, you two weren't right. members at the time. So th th I know they've expanded to a six piece or a four right, piece, yes. haven't they? Yeah, we, yeah. we brought an Americana sound to Trenchfoot. We think, we, like ourselves as, we think of ourselves as the Stevie Nicks and Lindsay Buckingham of <laughs> Trenchfoot. <laughs> <laughs> you dream on Steve, you dream, 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 on. dream, dream, dream on. on. Yeah. Well, no, I, we, it, it remains to be seen. With the con you're going to make a concert here at the Tin Shed yeah. today, record a concert. Yeah. But we shall see. What about you, Pete, then? You're not in Trenchfoot. No, I'm not in Trenchfoot. Um, I hear you've no. got an illustrious history in music, though. A little bird no, has told me. Tweet, tweet. Oh, no, don't listen to that. <laughs> did yeah, you, no, did you tour with Bonnie Tyler? Is that correct? Or I not? did many years yes, ago, yes. There you are. Oh, but why do you want to hide that light under that particular bushel then? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't like to die. I just don't like okay. speaking about those things. But it's, it's, quite, it's very enjoyable and I met a lot of people and it you know, and introduced me to uh, a lot of different types of music and got me a lot of recording sessions afterwards. That's really what happened yeah. as I got into the, the recording after that. And I always planned... Uh, to have something at home when all the touring finished which I did and uh, but I also got used to get a lot of uh, session singing work harmony and guitar playing yeah work, which helped a lot yeah. but so now uh, the, 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 the whole music scenes changed nationally yeah. Yeah. so there's not so much of that work about anymore well, it's very difficult to make a living from the music scene full stop now. I now mean, it is. Getting yeah. gigs, uh, can't yeah. sell records because people download the music and, uh, and what have you. Right. So are, are you full-time professionals? Yes. Really? Yes. really? So you must have other strings to your particular <laughs> bows yes. than uh, yes. just trench foot or, or whatever. So what else yeah. do you do when you're not I'm, I'm married? I'm singing for the brain leader with the Alzheimer's Society. Right. So I sing um, oh. all sorts of different songs to stimulate people with um, dementia related illness. And uh, that's, that's lovely. I do that part time and then just singing wherever I can other than that. 
In the bath. In the bath? Yeah. <laughs> Mostly, frequently in the bath. In the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> but that must be rewarding, though, what you're doing with the Alzheimer's. Oh, yeah. uh, do you find that it kind of helps stave off the advance of the illness? Or well, I just um, with some people, it, music can connect, make new runs, make new connections within the brain. So, for instance, if somebody comes to um, a session, uh, then they can um, be stimulated and the effects of a good session, singing memorize um having songs that they know and they can remember makes them feel that they've participated and the effects of it can last a week it can it can make somebody's mood you know lift so it becomes a bit of a lifeline to the people who come really so i mentioned i mentioned earlier about drugs in the californian scene as far as alzheimer's are concerned music can be as effective as treating people with drugs really oh well well it is you know there's a lot of research going into it um and uh, it's kind of some people with um, Alzheimer's have got parts of their brain which are missing, if you like. And if you can imagine it, neurons firing over are creating new synapses. And that, I mean, one person, bless her, she came to a, a session and uh, it was the first time I said, what's your name? And the carer said, she doesn't talk, don't bother speaking to her because she's just coming to listen. Within about um, a couple of weeks, I heard this noise at the back and she was singing Carl on land. She found her voice. She wow. was, Carl on croaking but then within a couple more weeks i suddenly we were singing daisy daisy and i suddenly heard this voice on its own singing dandy dandy the coppers are after you <laughs> if they catch you they give you a month or two they tie you up with wire behind a black mariah so ring the bell and pedal like hell on a bicycle <laughs> made for two on her own that's fantastic yeah. just came back to her you know Great. Yeah. Well, that must give you a great sense of achievement. I, yes. Without sounding glib, it must be really rewarding yes, to be able to do something know, like yeah, that. Yes, it's not many people can go to a, to a day job and make people very, very happy. Yeah. <laughs> that's nice, isn't it? Yeah. But I mean, that's one of the functions of music. I mean, one of the reasons I'm not a musician. I like being involved with music. I listen to music because it uplifts me, really. But uh, so I mean, you must get a great joy from being on stage and seeing people's faces. Oh and, yes, and, undoubtedly, yeah. undoubtedly. I yeah. see 160 people every fortnight. Yeah. With um, I go from um, actually there's a there's a fortnightly session. If anybody's listening to this and they're living in Whitland, they can come along on a Friday afternoon, two to four. In the in the memorial hall there, um, it's once a fortnight. It's called the QT Club. Um, right. I sing there, and I also do um, a session in Carmarthen, if okay. anybody wants to. And that's in um, Cartref Caness, which is the new um, day centre, you know, facility in in Johnstown. Okay. Do you have a website then, where the people could go to, or? Well, they can go to the Alzheimer's website, which right. is alzheimers.org.uk, yeah. and they can put in just put in singing for the brain. Um, in Carmarthenshire and then it'll give the details or they can ring the Alzheimer's office which is 01269597411 and they'll give them all the details <laughs> she, she's very good at these plugs <laughs> aren't you? Yeah. 
each other Stand by the stairway You'll see something certain to tell you Confusion has its cause plug you guys then what do you do when you're not in california well we it's still in the music scene yeah that's what i mean in the music um, scene. I have a studio a recording facility which i've had for since 1979 uh, and uh, people still hire it where is that in swansea so who have you had through the studio there <sighs> Oh, the big names we've had. It's a brand new scratch on piano. It took us five pounds to put it right. Ooh, and all that. Oh, we've, I, well, it's been a varied time, really. Um, singers, songwriters, groups, TV program, you know, music for TV, uh, incidental music, all sorts, any sort of recording, voiceovers, storybooks. Who have you enjoyed you most dealing it. with then? Oh, not. Oof. I won't know, I'm not going to ask you who you haven't yeah, enjoyed. Like, <laughs> musically, musically. Really, yeah, yeah. Musically. No, well, I'm sure Yeah, everyone is very nice to deal with musically. Huh? Well, it's the, the, my favourite of all is, is, an, is an act called Cuba. Right. And uh, Q-U-U-B-A. Q-U-B-A. Q-U-U-B-A. These youngsters in the wacky names, they think. <laughs> he'd, he'd be very, he'd be, oh, very one person. he'd be very happy if, you, if you called him oh, a youngster. Right. Yeah, I'm sure he would. Okay. Well, he is quite Tell young. us about him then. Well, actually, it, it's it's a little group that um, Lorraine was part of, and a man called Paul Carmen, good old friend of mine, and we've worked together for years. In fact, we hopefully will be soon again. I hope. You know, and he's a great uh, writer. He's a good. Uh, Great musician and writer, he's wond wonderful talent, fabulous lyricist, unheard of, but he's he really is something special, and uh, his songs are just so different, you know, and uh, very enjoyable to record and and take part in. Well, what were they different then? Hey, uh... Well, he's a master. <laughs> he's got a wonderful command of the of the language for a start. English. Which he adopts, which which he adapts in yeah English in t in in his songs, in a way that I've never seen. Okay, I'd, extremely clever. You I, know, was gonna, I was just going to give an example, right? Yeah. yeah okay. um, I was going to sing "Silent um, Friend." Well, you could, yeah. Yeah, because there's a brilliant chorus. Right? This is Go on, typical. Then. It goes, "Please don't hurt my silent friend. He's all alone. He could overload in minutes." Please don't make him cry again. He doesn't know you have no emotion in it. I mean, just two lines. What yeah. you know, oh, unusual command. That's and great, but Cuba, Cuba's probably the, the most enjoyable okay. musical uh, part. With regard to anything else, um, there's been a couple of people, people like Roy Noble who's come down and right, do yeah. voiceovers. And he was a, always a good laugh, you know, very yeah. entertaining and lovely fellow. Loads of stories. He's stories, called, yeah, and it's yeah. pleasure to to be with you know, yeah. and uh, people like that are great. What about you, Terry? Um, well, I have known these two wonderful people for longer than I care to mention. <laughs> um, and uh, well, don't I, mention. I, I, don't I, mention. <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. We got away with that. Eh? <laughs> um, and yeah. Um, what can I tell you about me? I um, have the joy of working with Lorraine and Peter. I've also had the joy of working with Lorraine and the guys from Trenchfoot, um, who I never expected to be in, but um, it's turned out to be a wonderful experience that um, is still uh, in 
intriguing, fascinating, and provocative, and they are really are a, a, a joy beyond words to be a part of. It's a real honour. Um, I also um, I'm involved with another straight covers band called the Distributors. So some old friends, um, and we do regular sort of pub things just to keep us amused from time to time. <laughs> um, I teach guitar in a music shop in Llanelli called Cadmo Music, run by a very dear old friend of mine. Um, and I also have the luxury of being a full-time university student at Swansea Met, University of Wales, Trinity St David's, um, where I'm hoping to shortly complete my second year as a master's degree music student in music technology. Right. So it keeps me out of mischief. So you're the sound man for these No, guys, quite, quite, the oh, quite the opposite. No, no. <laughs> well, he's tone deaf. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> eh? Technical, forget it. <laughs> Great songwriter, Second year. Well, he's a wonderful songwriter. Wonderful songwriter. Yeah, wonderful songwriter. Wow. Forget I mean, another word, Smith. I get from what you're talking about, I mean, melody is important to you, the harmony of the voices and words. Yeah. And going back to the Californians you mentioned, mm. I mean, for example, when I mentioned Mamas and Papas, I think they were a great songwriter, uh, John Phillips. John I Phillips. think he was a great lyricist. Absolutely. I'm biased because I had a thing about Michelle Phillips when yeah. I was... Who didn't? Uh, who didn't? Who didn't? <laughs> was she the big one? No. Yeah, that was no, the <laughs> I used to have the, the first album was banned in this country because there was a picture of the, the morning there in the bath and she, the, the other three oh. Denny Doherty yeah. Mama Cass John Phillips all in the bath with her but there was a picture of a toilet and in 1966 wow. when it probably came out I have it you weren't allowed to have you got the I've got it in stereo the censored or the well the two toilets either side yes, of the bath right, stereo yeah. toilets yes. With wow. the toilet or without the toilet? Because I can't remember actually. Because what they did, they sorry to interrupt you, they stuck a yeah. sticker over it. I can't, I can't remember. Friends. I remember buying okay. a copy of it in mono in this country, yeah. and actually having to get an American um, trade record paper um, to get a stereo copy from New York many many years ago, just so I could have it in stereo. Yeah, fabulous. Yeah. One of my absolute heroes, the man was the So you had a thing about Michelle like me as well. I, like I, 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 it was all about the music. For <laughs> yeah, me. of course. Of course it was. <laughs> I can't remember what the cover looked like at all. I've got no idea. I can remember the bath. I can't remember yeah. that. All the leaves are brown.
come to, I mean, I've not heard your full set yet. I mean, you did a Phil Spector number. You did a Mamas and Papas number. Um, I was wondering about it. I haven't heard your full set. When you come to write, is it in that vein? And how does it work when you write? Who does what? Yes, I'm sure it's in that vein. It's all, it's all unconsciously, really. It's all um, influenced by this West Coast music simply because we've grown up with it. Yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, I mean, so every, everybody's re a result of their influences. Mm. Really, of course they are. And that's what comes through. Yeah. But with, with a very extra, I hope, these days. Well, that's what I think. You mentioned you're in a covers band. Um, I mean, I, I'm very ambivalent about covers because Johnny Be Good and Mustang Sally are great songs, but if I never hear them done in a pub again, <laughs> I won't be unhappy. Yeah. But there isn't anything original in music. Everything that comes is built on what went before. Yes. Would you agree with Indeed, me there? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, one thing that's happened is that these songs that nobody saw happening 45, 50 years ago, um, they won't go away. No. And generations, a number of generations, have grown up with their parents playing them. And I have the luxury of, of teaching 14 and 15 year olds who still want to hear Eric Clapton playing Layla and right. the Beatles. Um, and I think the bottom line is, you know, if you go back to the great writers of the the 30s, people like Irving Berlin, Cole Porter, um, a number of giant luminaries. Those songs don't want to go away. And I guess that one of the, the really um, important things about that is that these things um, speak to, they're multi-generational. Um, and I think a good song will last. Um, many of the great artists that have, are, are still with us have had careers which have spanned 40 and 50 years. Mm -hmm. And nobody saw that coming 50 years ago. No, I mean, in the 50s, they wanted to be all round entertainers, certainly in this country, and become mm -hmm. end of the pure pantomime stars, which yeah. some people like Tommy Steele did. But no, you're right. It, well, hope I die before I get old or when I'm 64. <laughs> yeah, you know, that kind indeed, of attitude. Indeed, indeed. But I think it's uh, yeah. just, it speaks volumes to the actual quality of the songwriting that yeah, these things yeah. they won't go away simply because they're, they're too good to go away. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's any contemporaries <coughs> around who, you know, our grandchildren will be listening to? When I don't think there are many, and I think those that are going to be with us for a while are, as Nancy Griffith once put it on an album, a new light through an old window. Mm. I've got a lot of time for a gentleman called Ed Sheeran, yeah. Right. Yeah. and there are a few others who are exploiting the same style of music as he exploits. And it's a very old, you know, established style. Um, but the fact of the matter is, it, it doesn't want to go away. Yeah. Um, and I suppose psychologists could spend hours, you know, um, looking at the, the whys and the wherefores of this. But it speaks to, to many generations, binds generations together. Um, and we still love it. And we wouldn't do it if we didn't love it. We wouldn't write material in this vein if we yeah. didn't love it. And, and um, I think it, it's, it says something about the fact that, um, you know, Carl Jung once said that the artist hasn't got any real control over what they do, they come do it. Yes. Um, yes. And I think, I watched the ring um, spin words like, <laughs> you know, like, 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 like someone knitting at a ridiculous, right? I watched her doing this the other morning. Okay, and I was absolutely stunned by the he way she could sit. He came up with a line, and you know, and that was uh, it. Uh, and, and she just—it was like handing, you know, J.P.R. Williams the ball at one end of the field and saying, <laughs> <laughs> go, "Go and score a try." And it was—I yeah. was—I was absolutely stunned by the way she could just sit in front of the keyboard and rattle out three absolutely terrific. But then we verses. took it to—we to, took it to Peter to the studio, and I was in the next stage now where yeah. we, we sort of we locked the chords. We we. We sort of do the um, the middle eight, then I'll go back and we rehome the lyrics. Yeah. You can, yeah. you know, we'll, this is. But that's what, it. Yeah, sorry. I was going to say, what's really heartening at the moment is that in Britain they've started the Americana charts. Mm. Yeah. It's a new thing, and I think it's a, it's a long time coming because I'd be stuck. I'm not in. I'm not a folk. You know, I, you're either a folk person or a country, and what we're doing is neither. It is Americana, yeah. and yeah. suddenly we've got this chart. And I think that's that's the most hopeful thing I've heard in years. It's great that the the Tin Shed here is putting on a weekend of Absolutely. Americana yeah. and yeah. highlighting some of the great artists like yeah. yourself, 
he said in uh, unashamed puff, and also <laughs> visiting Americans and Canadians that we've got here this yeah, weekend yes. as yeah. well. So, you know, that's really good. Just like to pick on something you said, though, but I'm interested in the fact that song, you said songwriting is a bit like a conduit, it, mm. it just comes to you. But then you also said you've got to craft it then. You can't yeah. just. I mean, one Californian we haven't mentioned is Captain Beefheart. His uh-huh. lyrics are like a, a jumble of nonsense. But, I mean, there was some artifice, there was craft there. You can't just yeah. talk no, a stream of consciousness. No. Although, you, you, you know, you could argue that, that some have, and yet, you know, um, there, there is a, a, a more than that. There, there, yes, the artist is a conduit. I have a very dear friend who will sit up all night and uh, write lyrics. He doesn't even know where they come from, but yeah. he writes beautiful lyrics as well. Um, and But there is still that, that shaping um your inspiration may come from somewhere else mm. but then the many years of uh, crafting and sculpting lyrics into a form that's something else. I, think, I think that's where the artist really does bring themselves to the table um i mean peter will do it in many different ways in musically in arrangements in in ideas um and Lorraine will do it with lyrics and, and with music and, and, and musical ideas. Um, it, it, it's, it's very much a question of drawing on, on the things that we love and things that, that, yeah. that, that mm. we actually love about music. And I suppose you could argue that we're all recycling. Yeah. Um, and yet, you know, by the same token, if you, you could recycle something old into something new, I think that's... That's really a skill in its own right. Absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more. I think we've got to wind up now, though. We've been talking for a heck of a lot of time. It's about time you went on stage there in the tin shed and I think socked it to them. Thank the, you. You better go get our flares on, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm and thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, Put the lipstick on them. Yeah. Thanks so much for talking to me. It's been a pleasure. My I've enjoyed uh, hearing you. what you've got to Thank say. You. Now you I'm going to enjoy you singing. Thank you. We hope so. <laughs> How we watch them go with their heads held high through the tears and cheers of the last goodbye. Standing proud and tall Marching to the drum It'll all be over Before Christmas comes And we'll keep the flame Always burning bright In the hearts and souls On the darkest night All our hopes and prayers for all we earn is the ones we love someday return as the months went by though our face was brave the price was the digging another grave someone's husband father brother son in the name of God when will this all be done and we'll keep the flame always burning bright in the hearts and souls on the dark Peace. 
face it came Those it left behind Would never be the same Time to mourn the dead Time to count the costs That nobody wins When everybody lost And we'll keep the flame Always burning bright in the hearts and souls on the darkest night. All our hopes and prayers and the all we earn is the ones we love someday return. Thank you very much. Thank Enjoy you. your evening.